15.4c, Rational Exponents, Simplify. First, we need to start by remembering our exponent properties. Remember, if the bases match, then we add the exponents. So this would be a to the m plus n. Also, if the bases match and one is in the numerator and one is in the denominator, that means that we subtract them, or a to the m minus n. Then, if we have two variables inside and an exponent outside, we give that exponent to each variable, or a to the m, b to the m, using multiplication. Then, if we have a fraction with an exponent outside, we can give that exponent to each variable, or a to the m over b to the m. If we have a variable to the exponent inside parentheses with another exponent, then we multiply exponents, giving us a to the m n. Also, it is important to remember that anything to the zero power is just a one. This also would apply if we had a number such as three to the zero. The answer would still be one. If we have a negative exponent, remember we can move it to the denominator and it becomes a positive exponent. The same applies if it's already in the denominator, we can move it to the numerator and it becomes a positive exponent. If we have a negative exponent on a fraction, we can simply invert the fraction and then change the exponent to positive. Let's see how this applies in example one. Here's example one. Let's start by rewriting it, leaving a little bit of space between each term. X to the four-thirds, Y to the two-sevenths, X to the five-fourths, and Y to the three-sevenths. This is all over X to the one-half, Y to the six-sevenths. Now we can clearly see each. Let's first look at the x's. We want to make all of the denominators match so it will be easy to add or subtract them. As you can see, our least common denominator will need to be 12. So that means that the first one needs to be multiplied by four, the second by three, and the third by six. This will give us new numbers of sixteen twelfths, fifteen twelfths, and six twelfths. Now let's look at the y's. As you can see, all of the y's already have a denominator of seven, so we do not need to change them. Let's rewrite the problem again with its new fractional exponents. This gives us x to the sixteen twelfths, y to the two sevenths, x to the fifteen twelfths, and y to the three sevenths, all over x to the one half and y to the six sevenths. Let's start by combining the x's on, that are both on top, and the y's that are also both on top. Remember, if we have matching bases, then you add the exponents. This means we get x to the sixteen plus fifteen, which is thirty-one twelfths. And then we get y to the two plus three is five sevenths. And this is over x to the one-half, y to the six-sevenths. Now, let's move the x's or y's up or down, depending on which one is smaller. Although, I just noticed that we did not correctly change one of our exponents, which should have been six-twelfths. It is always good to keep an eye on your work to make sure you haven't made mistakes. Let's move the smaller one to the opposite side. This will now give us
x to the 31 twelfths and x to the negative 6 twelfths as moving it up makes it negative and y to the 6 sevenths and y to the negative 5 sevenths. We now combine the x's together and combine the y's together. So we get x to the 31 minus 6, which is 25 twelfths, over y to the 6 minus 5, which is 1 seventh. That gives us our final answer. Let's look at another example that is a little bit more complex. Let's once again rewrite our problem so that it has a little bit of space. We are also going to take our number 256 and turn it into its prime factorization, which is 2 to the 8th. So we have 2 to the 8th, x to the 3 halves, y to the negative 1 third over x to the 1 fourth, y to the 3 halves, and x to the negative 5 halves. And all of this is to the negative 1 eighth. Now let's check each of our denominators and see what we need to change them to. Let's first start with our x's. Two of the x's are a 2 and one of them is a 4. This means we need to make them all fours which means we will have six-fourths and negative ten-fourths. Next, let's look at our y's. Our y's common denominator would be six, so we multiply this one by two and this one by three, giving us nine-sixths and two-sixths that is negative. Let's rewrite this. Now let's combine the x's that are both in the denominator. This will give us x to the negative nine-fourths. Now let's move the negative exponents to the opposite sides. This will give us two to the eighth, x to the six fourths, x to the nine fourths, over y to the nine sixths, y to the negative two sixths, and all of this is still to the negative one eighth. Now let's combine our variables, the x's and the y's. This gives us two to the eighth x to the fifteen fourths over y to the seven, actually this became positive when it came down, so eleven sixths. We now flip this over in order to make it a positive exponent, so we have y to the negative eleven sixths over two to the eighth x to the fifteen fourths, all to the positive one eighth. We then give this one eighth to each of the terms, giving us y to the eleven forty eighths over two x to the fifteen thirty seconds. This is our final answer. Remember, when working with exponents, make sure to have an organized fashion to make sure that you don't make small mistakes and make sure to also take your time.